in this next phase, we'll set up the configuration in Hadoop's distribution to change from being in standalone mode to pseudo distributed. And you will end up seeing references to those directories that you just created. We'll be telling Hadoop where to find the name node and data node, uh, HDFS, and where to store its temp data, all that good stuff. Okay, so, so far we've been doing a lot in our home directory, but at this point in time, we will need to go to Hadoop Home. So let's change directory and we'll refer to Hadoop Home as opposed to the long form path. And there we go, we should be into user local Hadoop install. Okay, the ever important directory is the Etsy directory. That's where it has the Hadoop directory within it and then all of our uh, configuration files. So let's change the directory into uh, etc slash Hadoop and I'm just using tab completion there. If you do an ls there you should see all of the XML and shell scripts, all that good stuff. Okay, so we made a temp directory for Hadoop and one of the first things that we need to do is go into course site.html and tell Hadoop where that temp directory is and on which port to access HDFS on localhost. So I'll use the nano editor for that and we'll call up core site. And at some point you can use your tab completion to uh, find that file. Okay, with a lot of these files you have empty configuration uh, tags and I'm going to be giving you the uh, configuration so you can copy that and We'll paste this in here and you can get rid of the configuration tags that were given here and uh, paste this in. Make sure you get rid of all the extra uh, XML stuff, okay? Uh, because it's XML, we've got strict syntax here, so uh, the whole thing will not work if we have stray spaces and things not closed out. Okay, so let me do a control X. Yes, we'll save that and you know, override that file. Okay, so with that, we have actually, just to uh, take a look at what we just did again. So here we are saying that uh, the file system can be accessed on localhost through port 9000, that's our HDFS, and then uh, the temp directory is found off of the home directory. Now, as a reminder, you guys will have to change that. So you're copying and pasting uh, my account name, but you'll have to overwrite Marchar with your account name. Okay, then the next file that we need to configure is HDFS site. So we're looking at this file right here. This is where we'll be indicating uh, the replication factor and on which directories the name node and uh, data nodes, what, you know, what, uh, where they can find their directories. So uh, I'm just going to call up my previous command there and let's refer to HDFS and I'll do auto completion there. And once again, same old story, we're going to get rid of the supplied configuration tabs, tags, and we'll replace it with our configuration. Again, watch that you don't put extraneous uh, spacing and whatnot into these files. Good, so again, you will just need to override Marchar and put your account name there instead. Notice, because we're doing pseudo distributed, the replication factor will be one, and there are our references to the two paths, one for the data node, one for the name node for um, each process. Okay, we can save that, Control X, and yes, we'll save that, and we will override HDFS site. Okay, so some of that looks very familiar to that to you because those are the directories we created in the last video. At this point in time, now we're worried about yarn and MapReduce. So we have this mapredsite.xml, and this is where we will say we will use yarn for MapReduce. Again, we'll call up the nano editor, and I'm going to start typing some of this in, and I'll tab to complete. And we'll replace these empty configuration uh, elements. Actually, I'll just get rid of this comment here. Good, and we'll put in our configuration here. 
Uh, all of this configuration doesn't need to be edited at all. Okay, you can keep it as is, nothing to overwrite here. Basically, when you take a look at it, we're sending a number of direct references to Hadoop Home. And then, of course, we're specifying that we'll use Yarn for MapReduce. Okay, we'll click X for to exit. Yes, to save and overwrite that file. Okay, and I believe we have one more file to do. Yeah, and that's our Yarn site right here. So this last file, let's just call it up here. And in this one, basically, we're just indicating MapReduce Shuffle. So uh, this will set up our MapReduce. Okay. So again, we'll get rid of these configuration tags and replace them with our full configuration. Good. And save and exit. Okay. So now we can test our uh, configuration settings. What we should be able to do now is because we have created the directories for Hadoop to use and then set up all the pathing um, and configuration in the configuration files, we should be able to format the name node using HDFS. Okay, and the command is an HDFS command. So HDFS, we refer to the name node and then dash format. So this is a good check and good. So uh, yes, what you're looking for, you definitely want to see these last two lines. You want to be able to refer to see that we have our FS image created and then that we've got that shut down. If you don't arrive at that endpoint, there was something wrong with your copy pasting, extra spacing, um, uh, potential problems with you overwriting the account name that I had in mind. So do make sure that you get those last two messages. Okay, so what I've just done is formatted the name node. Uh, and so that'll be use HDFS. And now the last point in time is I should be able to start up my daemons, right? So um, we can start uh, D. Uh, dfs.sh, that's a shell script that should get our distributed file system, system daemons running. Okay, and that's looking good. So starting up the name node, starting up the data nodes, and then we've got the secondary name node running. Good, and then it's added Grogu to the list of known hosts. We'll not see that the next time we run that. And so there we go. So we've started up the master slave uh, nodes. And then the other one we need to do is start up yarn. So we'll start yarn.sh. We'll run that. And there our resource manager and node managers are running. And if you receive success there, the final check is if you do a JPS to see which Java processes are running in the background, you should see all of these plus JPS as well. Okay. If you've reached this stage, you literally have Hadoop running in pseudo distributed mode, emulating master slave technology, uh, to, uh, sorry, architecture here on a single point using these daemons. Okay, good. So in the next few videos, we'll just talk about how to work with the, the distributed file system in Hadoop and how to run some MapReduce programs that will be a little more similar to your lab requirements. See you in those videos.